everybody. I'm here today uh, to start off my review of the uh, Frozen Luna. Luna means moon, of course. Uh, this is a curing station. So unlike the Anycubic Wash and Cure, this is not for washing. This is simply for curing. And it is a big boy. And you can see inside the turntable is quite large. You see it can hold something very large. So this is meant to cure things that come off your Frozen Sonic Mighty. If you don't have a Frozen Sonic Mighty, and instead you have an Elegoo Saturn or an Epax E10, this also would be good to cure the, you know, on those things. So it has a power supply in the back. It's a very simple machine. Power su supply in the back. Touch screen on the front. You can see the number 20 there. I fired it up. Um, there's, of course, it comes with instructions. Too bad they're in Chinese. I should bring my wife back after. Oh, thank you for the unboxing. Uh, oh, flip side has English. Okay, that's good. English I'm okay with. So, what it has is, there's a button that says S here. When you hit S, it cycles from 5 minutes to 10 minutes to 20 minutes. Those are presets. If you do M, I believe that M stands for manual, it starts at 1 minute, should be. Oh, 47, wait. Oh, I'd, I'd been playing with it before. Anyway, when you have manual, there's up and down buttons, and you can change how many minutes it's going to cure for. So here at zero, move it up to one minute. These days, by the way, I cure almost all my models for only one to two minutes. And unless when it's done, it's tacky. That's all I cure. Um, especially like the Epax hard resin I've been using mostly. One minute cure seems perfect for it. It, it, it almost seems cured when I use it, but that's, that's not for here. Um, so anyway, this... Bed is uh, seems about eight inches diameter. I didn't I didn't bring my ruler down, but it looks about eight inches, uh, which makes sense because the build plate, the build plate on the Sonic uh, Mighty should be about nine inches. So maybe maybe that's nine inches. It's pretty big. So once you once you do that, you put in your time. I think all you have to do is hit the power switch. So let's actually test it out. Oh, and the, and the instructions say do not stare into the UV lights. Now, pretty cool thing about this curing station as opposed to uh, the any cubic wash and cure which is smaller but this all this has led lights on both sides and the top so it's it's going to really light everything up i don't think you need to add any reflective tape to this or anything there's a little red button on the top that presses in so i am going to assume that it will not function without the lid i don't want to test that out right now but i think when you put the lid on it should depress that that button which it does, and okay, and that, that probably would allow it to function. So let's throw a model in. Okay. Even though the Avatar of the Gods from like Kickstarter is a pretty big model, looks pretty tiny there. Let's, let's get something bigger. Let's get, uh, oh, here we go. Let's get ah, a dice tower from the Fates End dice tower uh, Kickstarter. So, you can see it's pretty big, uh, and this is printed in resin. Uh, this was actually uh, printed on the uh, E10, Epax E10, and this big old thing fits right in there nicely. Totally huh? fits in there. Okay, good. Let's just test this out for a few seconds. This is first time testing the machine, so hopefully it works. <laughs> I think, according to the instructions, I just hit start here, and yeah. I see lights on both sides and lights on the top. Great. You can see it's being illuminated. It is being cured. And that is, having it everywhere and then spinning, that is pretty good coverage. So again, you know, I'm going to go back. I think I reviewed the Anycubic washing cure like a year ago. And I'll say the same thing, I guess, about this machine that I said about that one. Everyone knows you can make your own curing station. You can make them pretty cheap. 10, 15 bucks, I don't know, 20 bucks, whatever it costs to get all the little materials you need. But is it more convenient, more, you know, professional and better looking to get one that's, you know, made for you? Yes. Does anyone actually have to have it? Probably not. So I always call these, something like this, I always call luxury item because nobody, 
nobody really need need needs it, but I kind of think it's a good thing to have if you can afford to have one. Like I said, it's a luxury item. Then I'd say get one. Okay, done. It beeps. I wasn't even paying attention. Okay, so I take that lid off and we just get the lid out of the way for now. Okay, and our big model is done. Let me get that out of the way. So it obviously functional does does what it's supposed to do. Um, like I said, I like it. I like. I mean, for stuff that won't fit in my any cubic washing cure. Which, to be honest, I don't really use to wash much anymore because now that I'm watching uh, with acetone mostly, uh, the acetone cleans the resin off in like five seconds. So using the wash cycle doesn't make sense to me. So I'm really just using my AnyCubic Wash and Cure just for the cure. Because this has the three lights where the AnyCubic only has one, I'll probably actually now replace my AnyCubic Wash and Cure since I don't use the wash function, as I said, with this because this looks like a much more efficient curing system to me. And I, I like that it has a lot of space because a lot of times on my AnyCubic even, I print up a bunch of stuff on a couple of different printers, whether it's a lot of bases, a lot of figures, a lot of whatever. And then I have to cure in two or three batches because things don't fit. Uh, this obviously is way bigger curing area, so I can fit more stuff, so it's more convenient. Of course, it takes up the footprint, is a little bigger, uh, you know, but I like it. So again, I would never ever on a luxury item tell people watching my channel rush out and buy this because it's a luxury item by definition. As I said, nobody actually needs it. You can get a strip LED lights. You can put it in an old bucket. You can line it with tin foil. You know, you can make them. Everyone knows how. There's there's plenty of videos on YouTube, not by me, by other people, that instruct you how if you need. But I'd rather have this than make my own. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the most I can say for it. So, I, I mean, I think these are convenient. They, If for any reason that other people see your workspace or you, the way you look at your workspace, it looks nicer to have like a professional assembled machine rather than, you know, your old Home Depot bucket with the tin foil on it um, and, and your nail curing light inside or, or whatever people are using. So, again, luxury item. Would I recommend it? Yes, if you have the money. Yes, if you want a curing station to cure bigger stuff. It's pretty simple. So this, this is a quick and easy review. There's no more in-depth review coming later like I normally do because it's a simple machine. It does one thing. Uh, it appears to me that it does it quite well. Like I said, I love that the lights are on all sides. Uh, obviates the need for adding reflective material anywhere in there to make sure that you get everywhere in your print. So that's it. I, I, I have to say, uh, I don't honestly, oh, full disclosure, Frozen sent me this to test. Um, so, you know, not influencing my review at all. It is what it is. You know, <laughs> like I said, I'm not even telling people to go buy it because it's a luxury item. It's one of those things. If you're out for a luxury item and you want a cure, this one seems very good. Actually, I like the, uh, you know, I like the way it's set up. The housing is uh, top part is screwed in by a couple screws. I mean, it seems fairly sturdy. I'm not sure what much could go wrong. I guess the only thing that could go wrong on machines like these, uh, I guess either your your power strip, your lights could go out, but I think by removing some screws, you, it doesn't look like it'd be that hard to replace them. And then the only other thing is, uh, I guess the motor driving the plate inside could go. That's about it. Obviously, I can't attest to how long this will last, but I assume it's a pretty simple mechanism. It's just turning around slowly. So hopefully... Hopefully, uh, there won't be any issues with that. So anyway, that's it. Please like, please subscribe. Uh, please join my Patreon. Uh, if you want more reviews and resin tests, uh, this machine Frozen did send me, but a lot of the companies, I, don't, I won't say scared, I don't get all the products from all the companies because I give honest reviews. So I think that might put off some companies from sending me stuff. So I do use the money from the Patreon to buy products that companies don't send me so I can test them for you guys. So I want to test as much as possible to give you the best information possible. And I always want to be able to do it independently. As you guys know, anyone new to my channel, you'll notice I don't have any sponsorships. Uh, although a lot of companies have approached me about it, I just won't do it because I feel it would compromise my integrity as a reviewer, and I don't want to do that. Companies send me free machines. Obviously, I'll take those in for review, because a free machine does not influence my reviews at all. I could give a crap if they give me a free machine, because when they don't, I go out and buy it with the money from the Patreon. I review it anyway. So 
I always feel if companies won't send me stuff, it's because they're scared and that's okay. I'm going to buy your product and review it anyway. So it's, a, it's all good. Anyway, that's it. Uh, hope you enjoyed the review and uh, check out my other reviews, resin reviews, uh, support tips and tricks and all that good stuff. See you soon and happy 3D printing.